Let's welcome in a very, very special uh, guest now, Mr. G.V. Prasad of Dr. Reddy's Needs No Introduction is with us on the phone line. Mr. Prasad, thank you, so, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Could you just first start with the lockdown? You're a part of essential services. How are you operating in this environment? What are the challenges faced and how is Dr. Reddy's overcoming that? The essential services uh, we were allowed to uh, produce, uh, but we've uh, designed our operations with two primary goals. The first one is, of course, the safety of our employees, the safety of our uh, suppliers and uh, ancillary uh, units uh, is the first, uh, first primary goal. The second one is to keep the supply chain of critical medicines that we supply across the world safe and secure. So with these two goals, we started uh, focusing our operations uh, to the extent we could. So we followed the government's uh, um, guidances. Uh, we changed the shift system to two 12-hour shifts into three, in, instead of three eight-hour shifts so that uh, there are less people at any given time. Then we took all kinds of precautions, uh, which uh, ensured that anybody coming into the unit is safe. There is a temperature screening of 100% of anybody coming into any unit or office. Then uh, we did a number of other steps to ensure physical distancing uh, so that we don't have any inadvertent uh, spread uh, possible. So we staggered timings for various things like cafeterias. Um, we replaced um, steel and um, uh, porcelain with uh, paper cups. Uh, we removed all kinds of uh, possible uh, uh, things that could spread the uh, virus, such as non-cooked foods, and uh, various things such as seating arrangements, all those have been uh, done. Uh, we also provided uh, um, uh, pro protective equipment for everyone, like masks, uh, hand sanitizers, and uh, also used uh, the, in, in terms of transporting people, we ensured physical distancing even when they're within the bus. Then we sanitize the offices, the buses, and all of them on an ongoing basis. On top of it, we banned all travel. Well, of course, it's not possible anymore, but all travel has stopped. And all employees who can work from home are given the, uh, are given the enablement required in terms of data security, kind of remote connectivity to all major platforms. So with all this, we've been running reasonably well uh, with about 50-60% um, right. attendance. We are reaching about 70% productivity. Yeah. Right, sir, we are almost in the third week now of the lockdown. The third week will get completed soon. Uh, you know, what were the challenges in terms of packaging material, in terms of uh, supply, logistics issues? As you know, a lot of labor, migrant labor has also been one of the big issues. Uh, were these some of the few challenges in the first 10 days? Have you overcome that? So in the first few days, uh, logistics was the biggest issue. Getting to the factory itself was a big issue. But I am very thrilled to see the government playing such a positive role, both at the state level as well as the central level, to enable us to get to work as, as fast as possible. So the police, the other departments, uh, the ICMR guidelines that are coming in, all of this have helped de-bottleneck. First few days, of course, uh, in any, any system with such a major disruption uh, would, would have challenges, and we had them. But right now, I think uh, we are quite uh, happy with the way things are going and uh, the supply lines are rapidly getting established. There are uh, challenges, but not nothing that we cannot deal with with the help of the governments. Uh, so after the first one week, I think we're pretty much running well. Right. Uh, so what is your understanding regarding the COVID-19 vaccine? What we understand is it may be 12 to 15 months away. But do you think a therapeutic solution, some good news in the next few months regarding some drugs could come in on this with the sort of trials, the sort of molecule research that's going on on this particular COVID-19? So um, there is a lot of work going on both on the vaccine front as well as on the therapeutic front. Uh, but, you know, the data doesn't, uh, you know, is not yet available to say that one drug is superior over the other or this is a protocol to be followed. There's largely anecdotal evidence at, at, at this time. Uh, 
Uh, but having said that, I think in the next two, three months, a lot of studies will reach some definitive conclusions. And at least the three major drugs, three or four major drugs, which uh, you know are being used and are being touted as possible candidates are all repurposed drugs. So they already have the uh, approvals for other indications. So my hope is that in the next few months, we should have something which will alleviate the symptoms and the effects of the disease. Uh, but the vaccine itself, I would be surprised if you get something before the 16-18 month period. Right. So just one sense regarding the healthcare spend worldwide, R&D spend worldwide, you know, biggest of the biggest countries, healthcare system, how they make drugs, what essentially happens in terms of logistics of drugs have all got challenged in this particular, uh, you know, COVID-19 issue that's been faced worldwide. Post this, when life gets normal, do you believe that big, you know, countries would spend much more on healthcare? Generic trends could change, generic pricing could change. There could be a material shift in the consumption of generics and other drugs worldwide. So generics, I, I, I mean, have a role, but I think more than generics, the last mile infrastructure, especially in countries like ours, has been generally weak. The primary health centers, the healthcare worker system, uh, all of this has to be strengthened. Of course, there are bright spots even within our country. I think Kerala has a very good functioning healthcare system, uh, primary healthcare system. So I think, uh, you know, at least in our country, we have a lesson in uh, Kerala, which we should probably adopt across the country and also invest a lot, a, a lot more in terms of uh, uh, primary healthcare infrastructure as well as ability to deal with uh, breakouts like these. Uh, and of course, we have a good tertiary care system. The corporate hospitals are filled that need quite well. But I think... Um, the government must create the basic healthcare infrastructure system across the country uh, and, uh, you know, make it easier for us to deal with outbreaks like these. Uh, so at least in India, I see that uh, we have a need, and I'm sure the government will, rec will recognize this and invest a lot more in, in the healthcare system. I don't see this as a, you know, a major positive or a negative for the generic industry itself. But one thing for sure is India has gained a lot of uh, visibility th thanks to Mr. Trump and uh, the hydroxychloroquine situation. So while India had some negative connotations in the last few years because of regulatory actions, it has come back as a reliable supplier of pharmaceuticals, uh, generic pharmaceuticals to the world. So that's something positive that has come out of this. So you, of course, you know, have approval in the U.S. to manufacture and sell uh, hydrochlorine. Uh, you know, what is uh, your message to people here in India? Uh, you know, is this one of the oldest drug? Is sufficient API available to, you know, go ahead and manufacture even if, uh, you know, a lot of people would need this particular drug? What would be your message uh, to, you know, people who are waiting uh, for this drug and are worried that this may not be available if the epidemic only increases? So let me first assure you that supply of any of these products, whether it is remdesivir, paraparavir, or uh, ivermectin, or anything, India has immense capacity to produce these products, not only for ourselves, but also for the world. So that, I think, is not a concern. The concern is which is the drug which will work. And right now, we don't have conclusive evidence on any one drug that this is the uh, solution. So I, I would uh, you know, hesitate to promote one drug over the other, but I have to assure... Uh, the country and the world that they are ready to do what it takes to make the ensure the supplies are available. This is something we've been doing for years and we, have, we know how to do this as a country. Right. So just a last word, you know, you have sufficient operations in China or, uh, you know, you also do a lot of work in China. Uh, that is a country which has had these issues and then, you know, they are starting to recover from it now. What is the experience over there? And secondly, uh, you know, sourcing of API for Indian Pharma was a problem since Jan because of COVID in China. Uh, has that situation become better now? So China is an important uh, link in the global pharmaceutical supply chain. Uh, they have strengths in certain products uh, which are fermentation based in a, in a huge way. And uh, also they are, they are the primary suppliers of key starting materials for synthetic APIs. 
Uh, India used to be a vertically integrated ca- country in terms of APIs, but over time the Chinese, because of their superior economics, have taken off that business from India. But uh, I feel this is something Indian companies can do. So they can quickly backward integrate, and we have the infrastructure, we have the skills. It's only a matter of time before our dependence on China's supply chain for intermediates uh, uh, comes down quite dramatically. And the government is also pushing that a lot. They've given a lot of incentives, and uh, I can see that uh, in the next couple of years, our dependence on the Chinese uh, starting materials is going to go down. Uh, that's something uh, good for a country. Uh, in terms of China as a market, it's an interesting market, very important market for us, and it continues to grow. We have our facilities there. Uh, we have a joint venture, which is doing fairly well. We also supply significant amount of uh, APIs and finished dosages to other Chinese partners, so it, it remains a healthy business. Uh, but given this disruption, I think uh, we have to rethink uh, our uh, dependence on China and uh, uh, ensure, and this apply, would apply for any country, so as a geographical uh, diversification of geographical risk, we will look at this. Mr. Prasad, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always good to get perspective from you. Karunia, that was Dr. Reddy talking about COVID, how they are manufacturing uh, in this environment and what are the challenges that they are facing.